We are now being joined by Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis. He's retired military expert and senior fellow for defense priorities. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, sir. You bet. Thanks for having me. Right, sir, like we've just uh, mentioned that the North Korean leader has reached Russia. And the trip comes at a time when both the leaders are extremely isolated on the world stage. And according to U.S. intelligence, an arms deal is on the table when both the leaders meet later today. Uh, talk to us as to what does North Korea have to offer Russia and vice versa. Yeah, they have a, North Koreans have a little bit more to offer than is, than is commonly understood. The, the, most people will keep focusing on the, uh, the probability that North Korea could have up to 10 million uh, artillery shells of the right caliber that, that Russia could use, uh, as well, well as a, a pretty sizable stockpile of anti-armor or anti-air missiles. And, and certainly all that could be done. Uh, but there are some indications that uh, some of the deals that, that Russia is looking to make is to use uh, North Korean labor as well and to maybe have joint ventures uh, at some of the Korean factories to produce the Russians things that they need, possibly even drones. It's, it's unclear just how far the, the cooperation could go. But that, that's something that would imply a, a longer term relationship and an expanding of what they've done as opposed to just making a temporary purchase to give them something they need right now. Right, absolutely, sir. You've touched on this, of course. But just for more clarity here, what are your expectations with regards to the broader outcome of this meet? Now, as we mentioned earlier, it's not often that we see Kim Jong-un leave the hermit nation. It's not. And, and, and I, I really think this is kind of a, an illustration of some of the problems of the U.S. foreign policy over the last several decades, especially uh, because we don't have a lot of leverage here. The, uh, the uh, National Security Advisor, uh, Jake Sullivan made a comment that, you know, that there's going to be a price to pay if, they, if North Korea does give uh, Putin some ammunition. But there's not much room for us to act. We're already sanctioning them. We've been under these so-called maximum pressure for, for, you know, many years now. And so there's not a lot of room left. And the, the, now Russia and Ukraine or uh, North Korea don't feel a lot of the pressure that they may have felt in the past to make cooperation together because the, the the West has already sanctioned Russia to the maximum and now, of course, also with North Korea. So there's not a lot of threat there. So they have a lot to gain and not a lot to lose. And that's that's a uh, something a bit of a problem, I think, for the West. Right. Absolutely. Now, that being said, what sort of a reaction or a response can we expect from the West if there is an arms deal that is finalized? I, I just don't think we have a lot of flexibility. There's not a lot we can do. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have uh, uh, certainly many reports that Russia and Iran have been expanding cooperation in both missile technology as well as drones, especially. And they also are having some issues potentially with uh, production uh, of those kinds of things and development there. And there's not a lot we've been able to do with that for the same reasons. And now that you see that there's more and more cooperation with, uh, you know, okay, otherwise isolated people from the West. And now then those things are coming to pass and it's uh, it's not a good development, but there's not a lot we can do. All right. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel L. Davis, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.